Hello and welcome to all my Mariner friends. Let's discuss Enhanced Safety Program and their question and answer related to MMD India. The International Code on the Enhanced Program of Inspections during Surveys of Bulk Carriers and Oil Tankers, 2011. 2011 ESP Code establishes a survey standard for the regular and safe survey of the cargo and ballast areas of oil tankers and bulk carriers. The 2011 ESP Code became mandatory under SALAS Regulation 11BY1. As per IMO, ESP is for bulk carriers and oil tankers. As per International Association of Classification Society Notation, ESP is for bulk carriers, oil tankers and chemical tankers. Now the question comes. What is an enhanced survey program? It is not a survey, but a survey program to plan surveys. ESP just gives the specific guidelines about what to inspect during these surveys with respect to hull and structure of bulk carriers and oil tankers. A ship undergoes four types of surveys during its five yearly cycle of statutory surveys. Annual survey, intermediate survey, renewal survey and dry dock survey. Annex 1 defines the requirement for the close-up survey during a five-year renewal survey. Annex 2 define requirements for thickness measurement during a five-year renewal survey. The renewal survey may be commenced at the fourth annual survey and be progressed during the succeeding year with a view to completion by the fifth anniversary date. A survey in dry dock should be a part of the renewal survey. There should be a minimum of two inspections of the outside of the ship's bottom during the five-year period of the certificate. In all cases, the maximum interval between bottom inspections should not exceed 36 months. Next question comes. What is the meaning of enhanced in ESP? Answer for this is. Number of surveyors are more than one. Close-up inspection requirements. More structured or more organized. Better planning. Record keeping. Close-up survey is a survey where the details of structural components are within the close visual inspection range of the surveyor that is normally within reach of hand. Critical structure area, a location which has been identified from calculation to require monitoring or from the service history of the subject ship or from similar or from sister ship to be sensitive to cracking, buckling or corrosion which would impair the structural integrity of the ship. Suspect areas, they are the location showing substantial corrosion and are considered by the surveyor to be prone to rapid wastage. Overall survey, overall survey is a survey intended to report on the overall condition of the whole structure and determine the extent of additional close-up surveys. Before the survey program is developed, the ship owner is required to complete a survey planning questionnaire. Ship owner is supposed to provide information on any hull-related deficiencies identified during PSC inspections of the ship, any hull-related nonconformities issued during SMS audits, cargo carried history of the ship to get the information, on how frequently corrosive cargoes are carried that has the potential to damage the coating. The condition of the coating, as per the ship owner's inspection, of the ship spaces. Substantial corrosion, is an extent of corrosion, such that assessment of corrosion pattern, indicates a wastage in excess of 75% of allowable margins, but within acceptable limits. T. Initial thickness. TD, max allowed wastage. TA, min thickness allowed. Allowable corrosion is original thickness minus renewal thickness which is minimum allowed thickness. 
when maximum allowed wastage is gone, means initial thickness, T, approaches min thickness allowed, Ta. Now plate thickness at min level, if it goes more wastage, then needs plate renewal. When 75% of maximum allowed, wastage is gone, now we have 25% remaining to waste. So now plate thickness can say, entered in that region, which is known as substantial corrosion. Q, what is thumb rule for plate thickness to renew? Thumb rule, when plate thickness reaches, minimum allowed thickness, I.E., 25% wastage. Now the question comes. What are the three major contents, in the enhanced survey program file, on board? Answer for this is. This file will have survey reports of Hull structure Condition evaluation report Thickness measurement report Condition evaluation report Tank coating condition Areas of substantial corrosion, if any Class condition slash any memorandum Thickness report Detailed thickness report Thickness Summary Report Now surveyor may ask you What led to ESP? You should start saying Up to end of 1990, 216 bulk carriers were lost. Which forces the IMO to think about something seriously wrong with either the design of the ship or with the maintenance of the ship. In 1993 IACS introduced ESP for more close-up inspections of the ships for bulk carriers and oil tankers. Then again in 1994, alone 12 bulk carriers were lost in the sea. Now IMO introduced FSA code. This made the IMO to take special measures and adopt a new SALAS Chapter 12 by 1 to enhance maritime safety. So, ESP is made a statutory requirement for SAFCON. In the case of loss of a bulk carrier, it is just a loss of vessel, and loss of life, environmental loss is not much severe. But in case of loss of oil tankers, it is a serious threat to the environment. So, oil tankers are also included under ESP by IMO. And at same time IACS introduced chemical tankers as well to bring under purview of ESP notation. Next question is. What is condition evaluation report? Answer for this is. This report is also called a green file. This report gives the complete report of the renewal survey conducted for the ship it will give the actual condition of tank coating. As per enhanced survey code, the condition of tank coating needs to be defined good, fair, or poor. Good means only minor spot rusting. Fair means local breakdown of coating at edges of stiffeners and weld connections or light rusting of over 20% or more areas under consideration. Poor means general breakdown of coating over 20% or more and areas of hard scale at 10% or more of areas under consideration. Conditional evaluation report will also have the details of any memorandum of class issued to the ship. Condition evaluation report will also mention the areas of substantial corrosion. Next question is. Many surveyor ask what are the content of CER, Condition Evaluation Report. You should answer by saying. This report is also called a green file. This report gives the complete report of the renewal survey conducted for the ship. It will give the actual condition of tank coating. 1. General Provision. 2. Report Review List of Survey Report. 3. Close-up survey. 4. Cargo and ballast piping system. 5. Thickness measurement. 
6. Tank coating condition. 7. Repair. 8. Condition of recognized organization or class. 9. Memoranda. 10. Revaluation results of the ship's longitudinal strength. 11. Conclusion. Next question, what are the latest Enhanced Survey Program, 2013 edition, which has been in force since 2016? Answer for this is. Pitting and grooving corrosion, definition added. Documentation on board supporting documents for CS are built bulk carrier or oil tankers. Extent of tank pressure testing added in Annex B Part A. Identified substantial corrosion area. Additional thickness measurement for IACSCS are built bulk carrier slash oil tanker. Pitting corrosion is defined as scattered corrosion spots or areas with local material reductions which are greater than the general corrosion in the surrounding areas. Grooving corrosion is a typical material loss adjacent to welding joints along abutting stiffeners and at stiffness or plate butts or seams. Now some straightforward questions. Difference between Enhanced Survey Program and Continuous Hull Survey, CHS. CHS is not applicable to oil tanker, bulk carrier, ships carrying dangerous chemicals in bulk, and general dry cargo ships. If CHS is taken then ESP is not applicable for that ship. Why CHS is not allowed for ESP vessels? CHS is not enhanced for enhanced surveys, need thickness measurement, coating inspection, corrosion inspection and close-up survey. CHS applicable for passenger ships, ferry, tankers for liquefied gas, tankers for compressed natural gas, containers, roll-on roll-off vessels. All National Association Classification Society members. In ESP what areas you will check what to check in ESP? Ship structural damage or deformation. Corrosion. Condition of hull. Pitting. Condition of coating. Watertight integrity of ship. Check past reports and assess areas of concentration, recommendations of repair, and effectiveness, equipments and reports related to their conditions. Reports of structural surveys. Condition evaluation report. Thickness measurement reports. Ships criteria for inspection, as per enhanced survey program. Bulk carriers and oil tankers greater than 20,000 dead weight. Two surveyors are required from the 15th year that is, from the third renewal survey. And after that every intermediate, and renewal survey. Only bulk carriers more than 1 lakh deadweight, two surveyors are required between 10 to 15 years of age that is when the ship is 12.5 years, subsequently every after 2.5 years. Mean starts from third intermediate. Do chemical tankers come under the purview of ESP or not? Chemical tankers come under the purview of ESP code, for IACS classification societies for ESP notations. For statutory requirement not for chemical tankers. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will be adding more videos. Please feel free to ask more related questions.